Hey guys, Animortis here. Uh, okay, so as promised, we are going to go through a walkthrough of how to install Debian uh, in the command line entirely. As I've said before, Debian is my preferred Linux operating system. It is a great choice and has all the same capabilities of any other Linux, including Arch, and the same customizability. So let's just not have any illusions here about what we can and can't do with our Linuxes. So um, I already did the Ubuntu video. If you're happy with that, you know, go ahead, take a look, watch through it. Debian's a little different. It's actually a little more forgiving in, which is ironic considering Ubuntu is generally regarded as the more user-friendly distro. Um, this is, however, because of the level of intricacy we're going to be getting into, it makes sense that Debian, which is a more flexible OS, would be a li little more inclined to get out of your way and let you do this sort of thing. So let's just break on down to it, shall we? Okay, so to get started, I've loaded up here a live CD, standard Debian live environment. You can use any one you want. As long as they are there, you can access them. So uh, I have blown up the text for you just to make it easier to read and change the colors so it's a little easier on the eyes. To get started, we are going to sudo uh, su minus to bring us into the root environment, apt update, just to make sure everything's updated, everything looks pretty good. So uh, now that we have that in place, we are going to first fdisk or find out what kind of hard drives we're looking at. So for here, as last time, I am looking at a VDA hard disk. Uh, this is These other two are the CD-ROMs itself. Uh, the live environment. So just the VDA for you, it's probably going to say SDA or SDB or wherever you want to end up installing it. So we're going to F disk. And this is going to seem familiar from our Ubuntu install because this is almost going to be identical compared to that one. So going ahead and typing. And we're going to initialize a new GPT label just to make sure that it can load up. Um, I am going to change things up a little bit differently here, guys. I'm going to add us a swap partition. I've decided I like them again. I think um, swap files are great. I've never personally need needed to make all those adjustments. Swap files provide a lot of flexibility, but they also run into some problems, especially with the newer, higher-end uh, file systems like uh, Butterfuss or ZFS. So uh, we're just going to do a swap file today, too. So first thing, though, we need an EFI partition. And we're just going to do default partition number one, first sector default, last sector, and we're going to do a plus 512M for 512 megabytes. We're going to push T, change the type 1 for EFI system partition. Now we're going to do our swap partition, default 2, default. And then I'm going to do, uh, for the sake of this video, 12 gigabytes of uh, swap space. This is entirely dependent on how much RAM your system has. Uh, my main desktop, I will do 32 gigabytes, which is a one-to-one -one of what my RAM requirements are, or what my RAM is on my computer. In the past, it had been it had been double the amount of RAM you had. It, you know, just adjust this based on your situation. If all else, uh, all other doubt, one-to-one -one is fine. So that's a one-to-one -one for this environment. And then we're gonna change the type on that. Uh, default 2, and then I don't know the number for this off the top of my head. So I'm going to push L, and then we're going to list. And I am looking for Linux swap, which as you can see there is number 19. I'm going to highlight this for you. And Q, 19. So that is a Linux swap partition. Then finally, we're going to create our final partition. We're just going to default on everything on this and leave it as a Linux file partition. Then we're going to push W, and we're going to write that to the disk. So now, when we go into LSBLK, as you can see here, we have our three partitions, 512 boot partition, our 12 gigabyte swap partition, and our 87 gigabyte main partition. And if we want to get a little more information, we can go BLK ID and we can get their UUIDs. So first thing, we need to change these to, uh, we need to put some file systems on there. So make file system. And for our EFI partition, these always have to be uh, VFAT 
It's just the way EFI technology reads, so the VFAT file system is necessary. So we're going to go VFAT dev VDA1, which is our 512 megabyte VFAT partition. Pull that up again. Uh, as you can see, this has changed the UUID on this to something much shorter, more matching the VFAT file system type. Next, we're going to make a make our second partition swap with make swap and then dev VDA2. That is now a swap partition. Okay, now that we've cleared that up and we got our swap and we got our EFI, we're going to make our main file system. Um, for the sake of making it an interesting and a little different, we're going to use XFS. I know I did EXT4 last time. You just do same thing, make file system EXT4 if you want to use EXT4. I'm going to do XFS. So first we need to install the XFS technology. So apt install XFS progs. And then we're gonna say yes. Okay, now we got XFS technology on there. XFS, dev, VDA3, you're gonna do SDA3. And now we have a fully partitioned uh, hardware or system. So we got VFAT, XFS, and swap space. So that's all looking pretty good. Next up, it's time to do the installation itself. Now the first things first though, we do need to mount our file systems to make sure they're available to us. So first, we're going to mount dev vda3 slash mnt. That puts our main write partition on, v on the mount folder where we're going to be doing most of our work. Then we're going to make path, make dir path mnt boot efi for our efi partition. Then we're going to mount dev vda1 and T boot EFI and if this all should sound familiar to you if you've watched the Ubuntu video. Now it's time to do our installation. So as before, apt install the bootstrap. I'll just let that go ahead. Okay, now that that's installed, it's time to install our operating system. So we're gonna go to bootstrap, sound familiar? Bullseye, because we're using a Debian system. Bullseye is the latest stable release for Debian, at least as of the date of this video. And then we're going to put it in our mount folder. So let's go ahead and get started. Okay, and that's what you want to see. You want to see the base system installed successfully. Okay, now that we have had our system installed successfully and we've cleared our workspace, we're going to add and modify our app sources list. So first things first, copy our etc apt sources.list to mount etc apt, and that's going to be good to go. Now we need to make sure, though, that we've updated our app sources list from the one on the live CD. The one on the live CD is much more limited. So we need to make sure that we've updated it, improved it to better fit our uh, app list that we're going to be using on the hard drive. Now, as you can see, if I go into the sources list that's currently in the live in the installed environment, it's very short. This is not going to do a whole lot for you, and it's certainly not going to be enough. So we're going to delete for now, and we need to get a real app sources list. So I went to the Debian wiki and I searched for app sources or sources list and we're gonna find information on configuring our app sources. Now uh, I, as I've shown you, you open up the sources.list file in the etc apt folder and we're gonna go down to this example app sources list and we're gonna take and as you can see here, it's much longer and more detailed than what we have right now. We're going to take, we're going to copy it, and then uh, I'm going to go and I'm going to paste. And now we have a more complete app sources list that will work better for our uh, installed computer system and will be have more access to updates and security, as you can see here. Um, one thing to note, if you're going to be running a different uh, version of Debian, if you want to run SID. Well, as we went over, SID doesn't need as much, so maybe a better choice would be Bookworm. Uh, if you're going to run Bookworm, you can just delete Bullseye and insert Bookworm. 
now we don't need it and then you just change that for all of those um, but we're not gonna do that we're gonna go we're gonna stick with bullseye because it is the current stable version and then we're gonna W and quit so now we've got the app sources list ready now we have to mount our pseudo file systems and I did this the long way on the last video we will do it the short way on this video so this is gonna be a bash command so order in sys dev proc do mount our bind dollar sign dir dir and this just basically does the long version but in one command do it however you'd like as long as you get those systems mounted dollar sign dir done so now the pseudo file systems are mounted Next, we just need to copy our resolve.conf EDC resolve.conf to mount EDC, nope, that's not the folder, ETC, and now we got that done. All right, now we're ready to shoot into our installed environment and get to work. Um, so we're gonna go shroot, bin, bash, and now we're inside the computer system. We're on our hard drive. This is the thing that we've installed. Now we still have some more work to do. So first things first, we're gonna update apt. And that's just gonna pull all those sources that we had just updated and make sure everything's great and ready to install. Now, since we're using XFS on this system, we do need to install XFS progs here as well. Now that's gonna pull in a lot of stuff because the flat Debian version doesn't use XFS progs typically. But uh, if you were running Butterfuss, you would also have to do something like this. So. We will go ahead with that. Next up, we need to in configure our location. So first things first, apt install locales. Now that we've got that installed, we are going to dpackage reconfigure locales. And this allows us to set where our keyboard and where we're located. So I am an American English speaker. And we're gonna look for EN US UTF-8. And then we're gonna choose that from the list, third one down. This will generate our locale and we'll be good to go there. I'm gonna set a root password. Why? Because, well, we don't want people to just be able to get into our computer and do whatever they want. So that has been set successfully. Next up, we need to install the kernel itself. The operating system is here, but we don't have the kernel. So we're gonna go apt install Linux image AMD 64, that's our kernel. And then we're gonna put in a couple other tools also like sudo ntp, we're gonna do dhcpcd so we can get on the internet. Uh, I like vim and uh, I, think, I think that's pretty good for now. So we'll just go ahead with that. Just let that, get, let that run its course. Okay, now that we got the kernel installed, things are starting to really look up. We're going to move on and we're gonna set up our FS tabs. First, we're gonna clear our work environment. Okay, now this will be pretty straightforward. Um, I am going to make sure that we have the swap partition included though. So I'm gonna copy, proc, mounts, etc, FS tab. And we're gonna go, we're gonna vim into etc, FS tab. And as you can see here, here's a whole lot of stuff we don't need. We need VDA3, that's our hard drive, completely configured already, all good to go. VDA1, that's our EFAT part, that's our EFI partition. But we're gonna just delete everything else. Except temp fs. Um, oop, I did not mean to do that. Temp fs there. We're gonna change this to insert with i slash temp, we're gonna get rid of the rest of these. And then I just wanna make sure that I have my swap set up. So uh, we'll go dev, VDA2, swap, swap, defaults, zero, zero. And that's, that's saved. Now, 
because Linuxes have a tendency to change these letters, the drive letters, uh, especially the A's and the B's and the C's that you're going to see with SDA or VDA, we want to change these to our UUID. So we need to find out what those are first. We've updated this. We need to do BLK ID. And here's all that information listed. I'm going to copy and paste these into FS tab just to make sure that FS tab will always know exactly where these are, no matter what Linux decides to call them. So we'll just delete that with X and then we'll paste. We don't want quotation marks. Control, we'll do shift ZZ to just save out and quit. I want to get my swap partitions UUID as well. And we're just going to go down here. Close that out. And then we need to get Shift CZ. We need to get our hard drive, our primary partition. Edit, copy. Vim back into FS tab. Insert, edit, paste. And once again, remove the quotations. Okay, Shift CZ, and we've got FS tab set up. So we are looking very, very good. This is a time, now, now that we're sort of in the home stretch, things are in great uh, position, let's set our host name. So host name, and this is just gonna let us change uh, that name that you get at the command line and, and where to be identified on your network. Um, we're gonna use deb strap, save that. And that's gonna be our host name. We'll do via etc hosts to pull up our host list. Again, we're gonna get rid of localhost, which is a very generic name. Push A to append, dev strap, get rid of localhost again. Dev strap, shift ZZ to save. Okay, looking pretty good. Time to set the time zone. So dpackage, reconfigure tz data. And I am on the eastern seaboard of the United States. New York shall do well for that. Find you, there you are, New York. So now it's time to install Grub. First we need to install that via apt. Apt install Grub EFI AMD64 since I'm on an AMD64 system and this is an EFI install. So we'll just say yes to this. Let that process. Now we need to install Grub. Installing that to VDA. That's what you want to see. No errors reported. Okay. Now that we have Grub installed, we're going to update Grub so it knows that Linux is there and that it can record it. And finally, Enable DHCPCD just to make sure that we always have internet. So that's it. We're done, at least with this part. And one last thing. Let's. Now that we're done. We can exit out of the root. We can exit out of root. And as far as our live environment goes, let's let's turn this off. Restart. Okay, here we are. Uh, and for those of you who remember my Ubuntu video, you know that you had to have a graphical installation. You couldn't put in no graphical environment and expect the thing to load. Debian is much more forgiving to this end. You could have, I suppose, set up that in the first place. Since this is required in order to get this going, I'm going to show you how to do that as part of this video. So I'm going to log in as root. And here we are, just a flat command line. Debian running bullseye, looking good. App update. Everything looks good. Everything's updated. No packages need to be updated. 
So first things first, we need to, I apologize, first things first, we need to Now I'm going to add myself a user. I am adding with user add. I'm going to use the mg flags, which provides a secondary group for this user when I add them. And I'm going to add them to the sudo group in addition to their default group. Sudo allows me to use sudo. <laughs> uh, and then it's going to be Aaron for me. Okay, now we add a password for Aaron. And then we install sudo. Sudo was already installed. I had forgotten about that. So now that we have that in and we have our user and we have our, their password set, I'm gonna check and make sure that they can do whatever they need to. Uh, we're gonna type vi sudo and it opens up this sudoers.temp file in etc. Uh, on other systems, you're gonna look for the wheel group, allow all members of group sudo is what it says on Debian. So we'll just make sure that's not commented out. It seems to be okay. So we're not going to worry about it. Control X, save modified buffer. No, because I don't want to change anything. Now we just log out a root. Okay, now I'm going to log into my regular user who has super user powers, which is very important. We need a graphic now I like graphical environments. You can stick with the command line from here on if you'd like. I would like to install xorg. So apt install xorg. And we're, as you can see, this is quite a little bit of a download, so we'll just give this a minute. Okay, we are down to the xorg installation. To simplify things, I'm also going to give you a login manager. So apt install. I like LightDM. It's simple. It's straightforward. Some people might like SDDM. You know, it's up to you. And then also we're going to give ourselves some kind of work environment. Do mate. So that is a much meatier download. So let's go ahead and get that going as well. Okay, we got those installed. Let's go ahead and clear our workspace. Now we're gonna do sudo system control enable lightdm. So now we have lightdm started. We are going to be able to log in now. Uh, system control start lightdm. And here we are, we're logged in. We have our login screen. Go to, we'll choose mate as our login session. This option will be made available to me, available to me every time I log in. Let's get our, let's get this to a more comfortable graphical resolution for you. 1920 by 1080 sounds pretty good. And there you have it. You have a fully functioning Debian system. You can use any other desktop environment you choose. This is just a basic installation of a mate graphical environment. I find that Debian is one of the, either the most stable, you can go with SID if you want a rolling release, it's just rolling in flexibility and capability, and it's it's my personal personal favorite. Um, I've always had a soft spot for uh, the Debian system, just to give me a chance to. It, it not only is it a community operate community distro, uh, it is also just really flexible, really rock solid, and can do anything you want whenever you want to. Maybe that's why everything seems to be based on it. So uh, that's it. That's it for this video. Thank you for watching. Uh, we will be doing more videos, much more complex videos in the near future. 
I am going to be next looking at Butterfuss. I am going to look at uh, running encryption, doing a Debian install, or firstly, probably an Ubuntu install with encryption and Butterfuss. I'd also like to do a FreeBSD bootstrap install with ZFS. So more to come on that. Stay tuned and keep watching. Thank you, guys. Bye.